ON12 P43 Question 7 State what is meant by the De Broglie wavelength. So, what is the De Broglie wavelength? I mean, it has something to do with wavelength, so I'm going to write that word down first. But if you need to remember the equation, this equation, wavelength equals to H over P. So, I mean, H is a constant, so you can think of maybe wavelength, one term that's important, and the momentum, which is P. So, wavelength momentum. You can say that this wavelength is a wavelength of a wave? No, wavelength of a particle. That's De Broglie's very important thing. He related the world of particles to the world of waves and put them together in one equation. Wow, mind-blowing. And so the wavelength of a particle, but this particle must be moving. So this is a wavelength of a particle that is moving. Because of, this is H over mv. Momentum is mv. If your velocity is zero, then you will have h over m times zero. Mm, some confusion. You cannot divide by zero. So it has to be moving. Have to have some velocity v. Then only your equation can work, you know. Unless it's just undefined. Lah. Cannot. Lah. So wavelength of a particle is one mark. Moving is another mark. That's pretty important. Next. Oh, here's the equation, the diffraction equation. An electron is accelerated from rest in a vacuum through a potential difference of 4.7 kV. Wow, this is our potential difference. So you could think of parallel plates, electric field, accelerated from rest, initially zero. Calculate the de Broglie wavelength of the accelerated electron. <sighs> Means after the 4.7 kV, what is the wavelength? Hmm, let's draw a picture. I like pictures. So if you have, let's say, uh, two plates and the potential difference between them is 4700. Oh, that's really big volts. You have an electron here and it's just going to go boop, 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 get faster and faster and go across there. So maybe this is going to be the positive plate and this is the negative plate. Something like that. Or the zero Let's label this the zero volts and the 4700 volts. Sure, can also. Up to you. We just know the potential difference is this. So as it goes on, it will gain kinetic energy, right? So as we saw in the previous video, you can create an equation to relate these two. Let's start off with that. So we know that we want to find wavelength, right? How do we find wavelength again? De Broglie's equation, right? H over P. But I need to know what's the momentum at the end. After all that acceleration, what is the momentum? I don't know that yet. So I might need to calculate momentum first. So let's do that. Okay, okay. Let's calculate momentum first. We can't use De Broglie yet. So let's start off with the energy equation. We know that as the, as the electron goes across, it will gain kinetic energy, which is half mv squared, from rest, accelerate all over to the right. So that will be equal to the work done on the particle by the electric field. That is QV. W equals to QV. Okay, this is a good start. I like this. Let's see. We can find velocity or not? Ah? Can. Ah. Okay, let's find velocity. So we're going to plug in all our values. Half. Me is mass of electron. Need to write down. Ah, no space. Okay, right here. Lah. This one is a constant you can find at every first page of the exam paper. So go check it out if you don't know where to find this value, me. I'm going to just plug that in here. And then V is what we're trying to find. Q, what's the charge of electron? E. What's E? E is another constant. E equals to 1.6 times 10 negative 19 coulombs. So I'm going to pretend that we already wrote that in there. And the potential difference, 4700. Zero, zero. Here, we will get a V of about 4.063 dot 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 times 10 to the 7. That's how fast it will be after accelerating. Wow, very fast oh! Almost the speed of light. <sighs> mm. And then, now we can find our momentum. So, based on the equation, P equals to MV, we plug in, again, mass of electron and velocity. Aiyah. We will get a, a, a value of about 3.7 times 10 to the negative 23. Mm, okay. So, now that we have our momentum, we can find wavelength with De Broglie's equation. So, we're going to do De Broglie's equation, H over P. 
Yeah, I'm going to write that in black to show that we are starting a new equation here. This one will be 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 over momentum, which is 3.7 times 10 to the negative 23. Wow, that was very long. Okay, what do we get here? Calculator time. I got 1.79. So this is 1.79 times 10 to the negative 11 meters. Quite short. I mean, that's really small for electron. Oh, I have so much space. Why did I crowd everything there? Never mind. <laughs> so my final answer, I'm going to write in 2SF. 1.8 times 10, negative 11. Wow, look at this. Five marks on top of my head right here. One mark, of course, is for final answer. Where did the other four come from? Let's look at all the steps. These are quite a, quite a few steps. One step comes from... Uh, the half mv square calculation. So some of you may choose to do it all at one shot, but this one is C1. If you plug in your values, half mv square. Just fine, okay, half mv square. And if you equate both of them, half mv square equals to qv, that is your another C1 mark. The next one is if you get the momentum. Where's the momentum? Ah, momentum is here. Ah. Get some kind of value of momentum or show that you know how to calculate momentum. P equals to mv. So this one also can. Lah. And the last thing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ah, this one is using de Broglie's equation, C1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's how you can calculate this thing. 5 marks to do this. But you got to think very carefully. So this might be quite of a challenge the first time you do it. Now there's another method to do this which is the more equation method. That's why I save so much space here on the right side. So if you want to try another method, I'm going to write this in purple. Now I'm going to write it in light blue. Okay, so method number two. If you feel like, me has got a lot of steps there. Eh? I don't want to do so many steps. You could derive your own equation and use it. So we know that the energy of the electron at the end is going to be half mv squared after going through the whole uh, potential difference, it will have some energy, half mv square. And how do we know what that value is? That is related to the potential difference or the electric potential energy change across this whole potential difference. Okay, now we want to think of a way to get momentum. So I'm going to rearrange this equation, especially this part, to express for v, velocity. So if I move everything to one side, I will get V squared equals to um, 2QV, 2QV over M. Something like that. Okay, 2QV over M. And this one will be square root also. So I remove the square root from here. La. There we go. So this one, now I can plug this into my momentum equation. So momentum here now, P equals to mv, right? So m is the mass of electron times v, which is this whole thing. 2qv over m. Wow, I got like equation there. Eh? Let's do a bit more manipulating. I want to bring the m inside the square root. So I bring it inside, it becomes m square times 2qv over m. So this will give me, hmm, this will be what? Ah? 2mqv. That's all, 2mqv. There we go. So, hey, we have an equation for momentum that can be straight away calculated from the potential difference. So yes, you can use this. Maybe once in a while, they will, you will see this equation appear in some parts here. And now once you have momentum, you can do de Broglie's equation, which is just h over p. But we know what momentum is, so we plug in h over 2mqv. So for any particle, if you know the mass and charge, and you know the potential difference, you can straight away find the wavelength with this equation. Wow, quite fancy that shortcut. One step, solve all. Can also, if you know how to derive this thing. So if you ever see this appear and they say, ah, derive, make sure you know how to derive with these steps here. It's just plugging together equations all in one instead of doing it in separate, separate, separate steps. Okay, so that's just a tip. Another method if you like to deal with equations a bit more than calculator pressing. Next, the final part. By reference to your answer, this one, state why or suggest why electrons may assist 
with an understanding of crystal structure. What? How? So if you remember in the theory video, Miss Lee mentioned about how you can use this thing called the electron microscope to study very small things. You can use electrons to study crystals. How do we do that? And how does it even help? What does it have, what does it have to do with my answer in one, which is a wavelength? Think of it this way. In a crystal, you have atoms arranged in a certain way. And you send, let's say you send an electron. I mean, it could, it's a wave and particle, right? Electron have wavelength also, right? So, okay, now, for electron comes in. What happens when the electron goes through any of these holes? Such as, well, let's redraw. Between two atoms, there's a hole. What happens when this electron goes through? Now, we're thinking of a quantum particle now. Huh? It's also a wave. It has a wavelength. See? Electron has a wavelength. So you can think of it like a wave coming in. What do you think happens? Let's look at the interesting animation for this. So we're going to take a sneak peek at crystallography where you have X-rays or some kind of rays sent into a row of atoms. And then they form some pattern which you can see on the screen. Because the kind of interference and diffraction, all kinds of things are happening there. So if you have a whole grid, a structure of atoms, then you will start to see dots here on this side. And these dots are correspond to the structure of this thing. So if they are very far apart, the dots become closer. Hmm. And what if you make them a little closer vertically? Oh, then the pattern also change. So observe how the pattern changes depending on the structure or the, the, the spacing between these atoms. If you have something, some other element inside there or some other atoms, pattern will change as well. Kind of looking like that. Okay, so this is a crystal crystallography technique where you can use incoming waves bombard it into an atom a crystal and you see the pattern that is formed and humans are really smart i'm just like wow electron diffraction patterns can look something like this plenty of these things in physical chemistry especially when you study in uni or higher it's like wow look at what are those what are those these are patterns that are formed Look at this. Patterns that are formed when you shoot electrons into a crystal, like a solid, uh, graphene or whatever crystal that is. And from there, you can know the structure of the atoms just by their, by their patterns. Isn't that pretty amazing? How do you know that? Well, people will do the math, do some kind of angle, angle, scattering, and we don't need to know that too much. But okay, so you've got all kinds of petal, pet, petal, patterns in your crystal. Send in stuff, you see pictures, and that's... That's going to tell you a lot about the crystal structure itself. Now back to the electron coming into a crystal. Now when you have a wave coming into these slits, this is like almost like a diffraction grating. That's why when you look at the green dots just now in the video, it looked very similar to the laser diffraction pattern. Because it is similar. So you have here, the moment the first wave comes in, which is the electron as a wave, then the electron can spread out and diffract. Like this. Here also can diffract. Like this. Here also can diffract. Like this. So all these overlapping, uh, you have some bright dots. Uh, how to draw? Uh, bright dots, bright dots, bright dots. Okay, And these bright dots are the patterns that you see. Constructive and destructive interference from AS. Wow, it has returned. Yes, come full circle now. Okay, so the reason why this can happen is because of the spacing and the wavelength of the electron. Now, if your spacing is just right, then you have this diffraction happening and then interference. So you can see the pattern that is formed. So we can say that the wavelength I mentioned in the video about how the wavelength relates to the atomic spacing. So the wavelength of electrons is very close, actually. Wavelength of electrons is close to the separation of atoms and that is roughly usually we say on the scale of a several 10 to the power of negative 10 that's roughly the spacing between atoms so between here and here spacing 
it very depends on the crystal and what structure it is. Lah. But it's somewhere there. And your electron is 10 to the negative 11. Oh, it's definitely small enough to go through and diffract. In fact, it will have a very big diffraction because it's quite fairly close in terms of the scale of wavelength. So, what about this? So, electrons can be used in electron diffraction studies. So this is what we call like electron diffraction experiments or studies. Sure, I'll put experiments. Okay, so that's what we call crystallography, where you study the structure of crystals. Whether it is like this, are they kind of aligned like that, or are they doing an alternate pattern where it's like, you know, one off like this. Many, many different ways. I mean, if you take chemistry, then you'll be like, oh man, maybe you might learn more of these. But there are many ways a crystal can be structured and bombarding them with electron, which are wave and particles. Then you can study lots of interesting things. So two marks for this one. One mark comes from uh, you knowing that the wavelength electron is close to the separation of atoms. That's why you get maximum diffraction and interference and all the wave stuff you can apply here. That's a B1. So what about that? So electrons can be used in dif electron diffraction experiments. That is the second part. Because they ask you, ma, how you understand crystal structure? Oh, this is one method. Lo. You, you bombard crystals with electrons and watch the diffraction pattern. So go check out the theory video if you want to get a recap on the electron microscope. Okay, Electrons diffraction. This one is used a lot in chemistry. But you also use the electron microscope in biology. So if you like biology, go check out the theory video if you haven't yet. You get to see pretty cool pictures of tiny, tiny bugs that live on our skin and everywhere. So that's all for this video. Uh, I will see you in the next one. We'll look at more and learn more about this world of quantum physics. See you and bye-bye.